Great. Uh, first thing on the agenda is uh, discuss. Yep. So anything on uh, COVID nineteen? Yeah. Um, numbers uh, in the state seem to be encouraging. Uh, the uh, the rate dropped below three, which was nice. Um, I think the only thing that I've seen concerning recently is that with the state of Mass is being investigated for a uh, thousand doses of vaccine going bad. Um, I don't know if that's in one shot or an accumulation of a few situations, but uh, that was rather disappointing. Um, other than that, um, I see a lot in the news about people getting their vaccinations and being happy. Uh, I know my mother and my mother-in-law are both going to a clinic at Milford Hospital tomorrow uh, and getting their first shots. So um, it's kind of 50-50. You hear some good things and you hear some not so good things. Tom? Um, well, I have no update. Yeah, particularly on the subject of uh, COVID, it, it's rolling along and kind of is what it is, and hopefully we'll be back to our normal soon. Missy? I I don't really have any updates on COVID. I, I mean, other than what you guys obviously know, um, I haven't received any complaints on any establishments, um, and this will run into the next thing of any updates on COVID clinics. Um, I uh, As of right now, there's no vaccine for our joint uh, venture with Uxbridge, Northbridge, Douglas, and us. I did um, send you guys an email regarding the uh, slideshow or side presentation that um, Diane from um, the Uxbridge Board of Health has put together. It's really kind of helping us on how we would do prep mod and things like that. It's more when we're actually in the clinic doing the computers and everything. But I, I just wanted to let you guys be able to see so you'll know for your own knowledge um, what things kind of look like. So um, other than that, no, no, um, no, no vaccine. So we're kind of uh, in a holding pattern. Alan? Um, what about Hannaford? Have they been able to get their hands on some? They were supposed to get like 400 doses. That's uh, Hannaford's has been able to get vaccine from my understanding, um, but right now, as far as the joint venture with us and Hannaford's, it's still going. It's in the hands of the attorneys. But they are okay. yes, they are getting vaccine. Yes, I know. Uh, I talked to Amy. I just you know I call Amy whenever I have something new. Uh, just letting her know certain things, and she said that some of the seniors have, were actually lucky enough to get a an appointment at Hannaford's in Uxbridge. So, but the oh, big okay, push, yeah, the big push is really to go to Gillette, to go to Fenway. I know um, starting next week, um, not next week. I'm sorry, the week after school vacation. I think it's the 22nd. Uh, the Natick Mall will be a um, a site also. And there's something out in Wayland. No, not Wayland. Weymouth, I think that's coming up too. So I don't know if the state's really trying to push the these max vaccination sites, but we're not, you know, as far as the locals, if you didn't do something with the first responders in back in December, um, I don't know how many of those are actually going to get vaccine now. So, Alan. OK, um, that's kind of concerning only because um, I'd, I'd hate to feel that our efforts uh, are in vain. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I guess the important thing is um, people are getting vaccinated. I know um, I talked to uh, Jim and Jean Brennan. Uh, they were at Gillette yesterday. Okay. Um, so they got their, they got theirs. So okay. um uh, again, I, I would hate to be wasting our efforts, um, but I guess we can't sit and, and wait. We got to do something. Right. I mean, at um, least we're, we're, I, we do have a plan. We're organized. It's just waiting to get the vaccine. Right. All right. Uh, I guess that's it on uh, COVID clinics.
Next is we can, uh, we can only control what we can control. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And I've been I've been dying to stick Tom. <laughs> <laughs> she was sticking me for nine years. <laughs> oh Lord. Uh, or is it, only, or right. is it only six years? It just feels like nine. <laughs> yeah, we're we're in year seven, I think. Okay, lucky seven. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjo- I'm glad you're enjoying it. Uh, so I guess the next thing is uh, talking about the VNA. Yeah, I was hoping to have some kind of update for you guys tonight from Kim as far as council and stuff. And she emailed me at uh, 20 minutes of four today saying that council's still working on the changes we wanted and that she had the first check go out last week. So I have a second bill that came out. I I sent a copy to you all. Um, I haven't paid it. This is one of the times that um, I would come to you guys normally when it's regular bills. I just sign them and I take care of it. but this is one of those bills that I'm not sure really what you guys want to do about it. So therefore I have not sent it off. Okay. I, I read a little bit of, um, I'm have, I, I'm terrible with this outlook. Um, I read a little bit about what Tom had responded. Um, yep. And I think I'm probably of the similar thought. First of all, the bill that we got for 3500 that we were looking for more description on for the portion of 2020 that I believe the accountant was supposed to get more information, even though they had already cut the check. We, ne- we never authorized releasing the check Mm -hmm. i thought that i had read that the the check had been sent yes kim um told uh tom z that it was okay to send because i asked tom if he actually sent it and he said yes on the okay Okay, so all right so i'm gonna take it that we never got any more detail on that one no okay and i mean I don't remember a proven payment on that. Anybody want to chime in and see if I'm not remembering things correctly? Well, so just so um, just so I, I may not be clear on something, then. So the recent invoice that you sent us to see, mm-hmm. I, I assume that that was um, from the same one. Are you saying this is actually a second invoice for a second sum of yes. money they're looking for? Yes, because this one says this one has a date of February 1st on it and it has description is COVID related services, $3,500 from January 1st to 2021 to January 31st, 2021. Okay, so uh, my apologies then. I didn't pick up on that. I thought it was another snapshot of the same bill and we were just kind of doing a wrap up of uh, the same conversation of the first one we got. Yep. So the my presentation in that email was reflective of what they were looking for to cover services in 2020, not 2021. Right. Yeah. No, because the one previous that Kim gave the okay, that invoice was dated um January 6th, 2021. And it just Uh-oh. that and that one just said CARES Act funding, $3,500 services related to COVID-19, COVID. Okay, all right, so my apologies then. So um, I, was, I was okay with um, the 3,500 from the 2020 perspective, um, figuring that I know they did, I know they, they did provide some services that were minimum contact tracing related for the pandemic, so and again, I, I would have expected something extra. Um, and of course we didn't, they didn't present it at the time that we re-upped the contract. So they're kind of coming at it, you know, in the, in the back end. But, so I was okay with that. But as far as future bills now for 21, um, 
I think that warrants a little more discussion. Uh, I'm not, I, I will just say that my email applied to the 2021 and not to the 21, not to the second one. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. I, I guess my only issue on 2020 was not that the amount of 3,500, even though it was an additional, un, you know, uh, an additional amount that wasn't discussed. I, I thought it was fair because I know, you know, I'm sure they spent that uh, covering, you know, March to December. Um, I just didn't think that we had actually approved payment of it because we were looking for more detail. As far as 21 goes, now that I understand what Tom was focusing on, um, we haven't, I mean, not that I'm, I'm sure they're doing stuff for us. It was nice that Ann showed up. I, I was surprised that Ann showed up uh, in Uxbridge um, because I wasn't sure they were going to take part. Um, is we, we, we haven't really approved the addendum. Right. So, you know, I, I don't know if I want to, without having a signed addendum, I don't know if I want to approve payment of that 3,500 for January, 2021. My only yeah. question would be is um, with that addendum, because we've made a payment, um, does that mean that they're going to, they can take, cause it's, can they take that, that, because cause it's for fiscal 21, which is what we're in. If we've paid one monthly fee, can they assume that we've accepted the terms? And, you know, I, I don't know. Well, that's why well, I, I thought that we should be presenting some sort of a, um, a letter um, that I actually would have preferred to have seen have gone out with the first one for 2020, given our, um, you know, our, I'm sorry, we're here. Um, given the lack of communication or detail from them on what we were asking for, uh, I think there's a, there was a level of uneasiness amongst all of us, all board members. Um, but I was willing to, from a 2020 perspective, kind of as it was, as Michelle had phrased it in one of in her addendum, actually, a uh, reference to a show of good faith. I was willing to look at that as a show of good faith on the Board of Health's part. Okay. But now for future bills, if this is going to become a monthly, now she's saying this is, what's the date? This is for January 2021 to, to when? So, uh, so the month, month of January, January 1st to January 31st, and the bill is dated oh. February uh, 1st. Okay, so there's a good chance now that we're going to start seeing a monthly bill for service mm-hmm. moving forward. That's what my expectation is. So, to be quite honest, unless we can get um, a little more detailed explanation from somebody at Salmon, I am not inclined to pay those bills. And if it's not Michelle that can step forward and do that, um, I don't have a problem in trying to reach the salmon family directly and speak to one of the family members. I was, I personally was hoping for some guidance from um, our legal team um, because Missy does have a point. Sometimes um, just the fact that we now have paid for 2020, the sum of 3,500, I, I don't know if on some legal basis could be construed as acceptance of the addendum. Um, and I, I thought Kim was having this addendum reworked with the uh, suggestions that we had made, um, especially to make sure that we could get out of this when we wanted to get out of it. Um, I, I know that was a particular concern of mine um, because the way it was written, um, 
you know, it almost looked like it could go on as long as COVID went on. And we don't know what that end is at 3,500 a month. Um, so I, I'm not inclined to pay that bill at this time either without some more information. Okay. I, you know, if that's how the, the both of you feel and, and that's the direction, like I said, I, um, all I'm getting is that council is working on the changes. I haven't heard from Cindy. I haven't talked to her. Um, but I wanted to have to have something. I was hoping to have something to give to you guys tonight for you guys to review is what I was hoping for. But apparently we're not. Alan. Yeah, I mean, I, I, if this is a binding contract, I would assume that we have to sign it. You know, yeah. and could have it, it's amended it's, on it. Well, yeah, I mean, there were some, there's some definite things missing there. And I would like to know who our dedicated COVID support nurse is, if it's someone other than Ann, so that we can establish uh, a line of communication with that person. Yep. Um, but I, I know that as we were going through it and discussing it, um, I, I wanted to make sure that with a 30 day notice, we could get out of it. The Board of Health Town of Menden could say we've had enough um, because, you know, we, we you just can't leave this thing open ended. COVID could go on for two or three years. Who knows? I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to go on at this level, but I, I just have a feeling as long as the government is willing to shovel money, um, people are going to be willing to take it. Mm-hmm. So I'm um, I'm concerned. Um, you know, we we got to have an end scenario. Um, either that, or we've got to have the ability to uh, um, amend the addendum. Uh, you know, when lesser services are required. You know, sort of a sort of a step down type situation. Back to you guys. So I get the oh, sense gals. that that first payment uh, that that Kim paid. I don't think. Can correct me if I'm wrong. That we that we as a, as a board of health actually a quote unquote formally approve that. Am I? Do I have that right? If it sounds seems like, and I know she was of the mindset in a previous meeting that. And like what I was thinking too, I mean, it's not a lot and that we have the money and she seemed comfortable in going ahead and, and paying it. Is this a case where she just went ahead and paid that 2020 um, without us formally giving the okay to pay that first one? I'm going to. That's assume... my. Sorry. Go ahead, Missy. Go ahead, no, Missy. That, that, that would be my guess, Tom. Okay. And, and that's the way I understand it. I thought we were waiting. The check was cut, but the check wasn't going to be mailed until the accountant or whoever was in charge of paying that bill uh, got more detail, more information. Okay. Because that was our issue from the very beginning was, well, you know, you're adding this on above and beyond the contract give us a little more detail and we weren't getting that from Michelle. So, so that being I understand case, it the way you understand it. Okay. So that being the case is this, you know, it just raises the question, is this going to be a case where irrespective of how we feel that we're going to get superseded by Kim and she's going to pay whatever bills come through on this thing? I would I would say, you know, you guys, the duly elected Board of Health, you, you know, you stand by yourselves. You you don't take direction from anybody other than the state and those that have elected you. So I would say from now on, um, unless I'm directed by you guys, 
I will hold every bill until you guys tell me you're fine with me proceeding because my understanding at one, the, one of the meetings that we had with our was I was to submit it to, to Eric. I put a note on it. Eric was supposed to question it and nothing really came of it. So if you guys from now on until you're satisfied when I get a bill, I will hold it on my desk until you guys tell me otherwise. I don't know how you both feel about that. Tom? Tom? Well, yeah, I think, I think you're, you're correct. That, that's how it was supposed to go down with that first one. And it seems like there was probably, maybe it was just a level of comfortability where that didn't happen. And it, it, it uh, you know, it, it ended up getting paid. So personally, I don't want to see any future ones regarding, at least regarding this issue, go through unless they've been vetted by, by our Board of Health. That would be my view. Uh, I'm I'm in agreement. Um, I I I don't want to put the town in a in a bad position, um, and I I don't want to commit to something uh, until we have an approved addendum. Um, so I'm of the same understanding and the same uh, mindset at this time. Okay, so from now on, this this bill that I have right now on my desk will stay there, and if I get another one in March, because there's nothing that has been, you know, uh, approved with you three, um, that one will stay. So I will not um, put print any more vouchers or sign any more bills for for the VNA with regards to uh, COVID. Yeah, thirty five hundred dollars until you guys are satisfied. Okay, and definitely put it on the agenda to discuss the next meeting, and hopefully we'll all be present. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, if we were to show anybody the addendum that they want us to approve, the way it was sent to us by Michelle, I, I think it would be an embarrassment. Um, and, you know, how can any Board of Health enter into an agreement as printed? Um, it, you know, there, there definitely needs to be some more discussion. Um, and, and again, we had suggested some additions or some changes to the addendum mm -hmm. um, and nothing has come of it. Um, and I thought that was the reason that Kim was on the meeting. I, I think what may have happened is because the check was already written, it, you know, that might have been the, the the thing that helped it gets put in the mail uh, versus being held. Um, but I, I remember it exactly the way you guys remember it and um, was a little disappointed to hear that it had been paid. Next issue, unless anybody else has any more on this one. So do we have to do a vote on that or are we just gonna, we just, we just know that this is how we're gonna operate for now until uh, we're all kind of back together. I mean, I can just take it under your advisement now and then at your next meeting, if, if things have not changed and you guys want to have a, a, a vote on it with Andy present, it, it's totally up to you guys, whatever you want to do. No, I'm fine with that. I'd like, I'd like to go that route. It's something that definitely all three of us should be uh, should be talking about simultaneously. So yeah, that, that's fine. Alan? Sounds good to me. Yep, I'm good. Okay. The only thing I have else that I can think of off the top of my head um, that's not on the agenda, but it would be fall under old business is Tom has redone the town report. Um, Alan, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. Um, I know Andy told me to go ahead, if you two were okay with it, to go ahead and send it off to Laura. So I hadn't spoken to you about it. Um, if you guys are good with it, I will send it off first thing tomorrow morning. Sounds good to me, Tom. Yeah, no, I appreciate uh, you, you blending that in there, Missy, and I think that's uh, that's fine to be presented as, uh, uh, as is. Yeah, Thank you. no worries. Um, the other Thank thing. Thank you both. Oh, Tom did the bulk of the work. I, I won't take credit. <laughs> Um, the other thing, too, is um, Danny was supposed to start tomorrow, but she's telling me the, the earliest she could get here is 530. 
So I will try and see if I can't work something out with her tomorrow. Um, I'll, if I got to come back and meet her, I'll give her all the inspections forms. But that is the latest and greatest that I have with her. Good. I was going to ask uh, how we were doing on that front. That's all I got. And uh, we kind of talked a little bit about it. Missy, you actually presented this to us, uh, I think, yesterday. Um, so I guess here we're looking to go, or the finance, FinCom is looking for us to go before them next Wednesday. Is that right? Yes. Um, uh, Mike Maroli reached out to me via telephone and email. So I emailed him. I've already posted you guys for next Wednesday at 7 o'clock um, to go over your budget. I did submit the paperwork, which I will send you guys a copy of. You're supposed to do a worksheet when you are when your budget's going up with an explanation. So you have three things that are going up. Obviously, the V&A contract, your trash disposal and trash collection, which two of them are very easy to to um, explain the contractual. Well, actually, all three of them are contractual, but the V&A might be something new that might have, you know, if they've seen that or, you know, it's quite a big um, uh, increase, you know. Um, but yeah, I've already got you guys posted and everything for that next Wednesday. Okay. Question. Mm -hmm. Any um, have we, have we made any inroads to a uh, alternative to the VNA? No, I have not had a chance to um, come up with a. I haven't heard from anybody. I have not had a chance to. Um, create any kind of RFP as of yet. I think that's going to be something that we're all going to have to work on and get the wording and figure that out. Um, I do know that Andy had spoken to somebody who knew a nurse who might be interested, but um, it's, it, I mean, it's very, it's kind of specific work. So, and I want to make sure I get this right exactly, you know, mm -hmm. I'll get what, the quarterly um, uh, updates that they used to give us, what they were doing, um, and other work that I know that they've done. I can also, you know, pick other towns' brains, especially maybe even Douglas, because they have a public health nurse. What did they require when they hired her? I don't know how long she's been there, but um, I, I can at least ask. Yeah, I, I would like to see us. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, no, go ahead. Continue, Al. Um, I would like to see us uh, continue to pursue that um, just so that we have the possibility of an alternative mm -hmm. um, and the, the money would already be in place. Hopefully, it would be, you know, something more palatable, mm -hmm. um, you, know, versus, you know, versus a 300% increase. Um, and, you know, maybe we can, you know, we, we, maybe we could return some money to the town, yeah. um, I and, and by getting a, a, a better deal and maybe, you know, someone that we feel as though, um, or an organization that is going to be, um, uh, more representative. However, um, it now because of COVID, it's probably a very difficult time to try to get that kind of a commitment from someone. Yeah, I was just going to say that with the circumstances of COVID going on right now, whether or not we would get any responses or uh, responses of quality or responses of fiscal uh, responsibility, I, I, I don't know what we would get. Tom? So did I hear you right, Misty? You would, uh, it sounded like you were alluding to something that uh, Andy might have done uh, to try to reach out to somebody. Did I hear that yeah, correctly? He, yeah, he ran into somebody um, locally here in town, and they knew someone that was a nurse, and that David might possibly be interested. Um, I don't know who this person is. I don't know anything about the person. Um, but again, if we create the you know, the proposals and whatnot or advertisements, however we want to go about doing this, you know, I'm sure we can reach out and, you know, let that person know that 
this is going out, I would do the same thing when we were doing um, trash bids. You know, if I knew someone was interested and the bids were ready, I would send them an email or a phone call just saying, hey, if you're interested, they're available. This is how you go about doing it. So um, with that said, then then without or, or kind of a precursor to formally um, putting out there uh, an RFP from the Board of Health uh, with the town of Menden, would we as individuals uh, would there be any issue if we wanted to reach out? Um, I don't know if our, it would be a formal reach out, but it would be kind of casual to see if we can make contact with organizations to see if they might be interested in servicing the town amended um, when an RFP does become available. <coughs> I don't think there would be a, a problem with that. Because, I mean, honestly, I would be more looking at um, it be more of kind of like, for lack of a better word, investigative work, so to speak, to, to find out if there's even anybody out there that would be. Andy just happened to come across someone. They were just talking and, you know, they said, oh, hey, you know, I know somebody. So um, I would only, you know, as as long as None of us have family members that run a VNA. <laughs> that could be an ethics thing, but um, other than that, I mean, if you think you guys might know people or know someone who knows someone, yeah, I mean, and 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 you have conversations, maybe they would think of something that we won't think of something, and it would help us do what we're doing. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Tom. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't uh, crossing any kind of a line or or stepping out of uh, process because I know that, you know, we're being a municipality. It's not right. like, uh, you know, one private business executive or individuals calling another company to try to, you know, see what they could offer. If, if it uh, is not considered a conflict, I'm just thinking, um, you know, a couple of examples. I know there's a couple of other BNA organizations in the area. Mm -hmm. And if it was not considered to be an issue, I wouldn't have a problem in doing a reach out um, to one of the, you know, to their somebody in their management group, um, sure. just introducing myself and trying to see if I could get a feel of back to see uh, if they'd be, if they'd be A, an interest, and, you know, also too, to also try to get uh, a level of service mm -hmm. that they um, provide. That's all. I think that'd be fine. Al, what do you think? Um, yeah, I don't think there'd be an issue with that. In fact, going back to the meeting that Kim was on when we were discussing this, if I re recall correctly, because it was under $35,000 and it may be considered more of we're buying a professional service, mm -hmm. I believe was the language. Um, it, I, I don't even know if we need to do an RFP. Right. I remember it the same so, way. Yeah. So I don't think there's any, based on that, um, I don't think there's any issues on any of us, uh, doing some investigative work and putting some feelers out and talking to people, um, to see what's available. Mm-hmm. Back to you guys. Okay, good, excellent. All right, uh, may um, may I uh, do a couple of reach outs then? And what the heck, get the ball rolling? Sounds like a plan. <laughs> um, um, Missy, one question. Going back to the finance meeting uh, next Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, would we have a board of health meeting prior to that? Or would uh, we just dial into the finance committee? I wasn't, unless you guys tell me you want to have a meeting, I wasn't planning on that. I think um, I've already posted for us. So I, once, I, I would just want to double check to make sure that the FinCom is actually posted, that you have a meeting you're actually going to attend. So I'll double check with Alan tomorrow. Um, we would just call in. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understood everything correctly. Um, the other thing is that the two components of trash that we were going to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, what, what were the two components? I, I the two didn't components. grab them as you. 
Yep, no problem. Um, the two components is one of them is um, your uh, EL Harvey contract, uh, the extension, which I we've got to write a letter and send it off to BJ Harvey. Um, and then the other one is uh, dr trash disposal. That is where the um, tonnage is for Wheeler Breda. That is right. where the household hazardous waste day is. And that is also, I put in extra money um, after we had talked to the gentleman from um, Sharps Compliance. Um, if the board had decided that they did, in fact, want to move forward with that, we would have some extra money to buy some of the larger Sharps containers. Okay. Um, Mike was working uh, on the hobby side, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, Related to trash, um, you guys might find this interesting. Um, I happen to see a clip in the city of Worcester. Uh, a gentleman opened up a business. I believe it was called Smash It. Um, and it might be uh, a situation where some of our residents can get rid of some things. Um, supposedly, uh, what I what I was hearing and what I saw was um let's just say uh you know someone's frustrated with their computer well you can rent a room and you can smash computers that they will <laughs> provide um there was a story of uh one guy uh, or one gal who the her boyfriend or significant other must have spent much much too much time with his uh video games so she wanted to uh show up and smash video games, <laughs> but it sounds like you can contact these people and they will actually come and pick up your stuff. So computers, uh, I saw cash registers, small pieces of furniture. Um, so they will actually come pick the stuff up. And then after the stuff is used as props in their program, everything gets recycled. So I don't want to cut in on Alan's business, but I would much rather do that than pay, you know, money to put my stuff on a Saturday morning in one of the containers down there. So I'm going to check it out yeah. and uh, I'll get back to you guys and how well it worked. Yep. Um, but it, it, it sounded rather interesting. That's it. Back to you guys. So you mentioned this is something that so people can actually go and um, physically participate in, and uh, you saying smashing these things? Yes, absolutely. Um, let, let you know um, they give you a, a a room like a padded cell, and they give you you know sledgehammers, baseball bats, etc. They give you all the safety gear, and I want to say maybe one room was good for two or three people and maybe one of the other rooms that they had was good for five or more people and you pay a fee to go there and take out your frustrations and it was called smash it i believe uh and it's in worcester and the gentleman that uh put this together uh actually has hired i believe it was like 10 or 15 teenagers uh to actually they set the props up, they pick the stuff up, they run the computer system to schedule these uh, smash it uh, situations. Um, so they make a little bit of money and they actually have learned how to start up uh, a business, finance a business, make it profitable. Um, so it was kind of interesting. And the like I said, the gentleman that set this up uh, was not only, you know, making a little money for himself, but uh, doing a little community service at the same time. So I thought it was rather interesting. And the smashing is limited to equipment only? Um, as far as I know, you can't go smashing people. Um, <laughs> but what I saw, I, I think I saw there was, you know, maybe a mirror. There was a cash register, a copy machine, uh, laptops. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm sure Tom that 
if you decided that you had a, a, a hockey situation, you could probably get a mannequin and dress it up, have it dressed up in the, the opponent's uniform, and you could go in there and take a hockey stick to it. <laughs> uh, they they hey. seem very accommodating to, uh, you know, people's um, imagination. Very interesting. Good stuff. Well, I thought it was great that you could get rid of this stuff for free, plus they do recycle it. You know, so yeah, like, I, I mean, mean, if you had a uh, TV all around, you know, this, uh, yeah, you're, and they, you're helping come... the environment, you're creating business opportunity, you might be alleviating tensions in people, you know, solving some social issues at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, and supposedly, you know, you, you make an appointment, you put the stuff at the end of your driveway and they come and take it away. There you go. I think my only question was, I don't know what this guy's liability insurance is. You know, I mean, if someone gets hurt, even with safety equipment and sledgehammers and baseball bats, I, I, I'm very, you know, I don't know if you sign some sort of a, uh, a disc, you know, a release of some kind. some kind of, yeah, because this guy's liability insurance would, I think, would make it cost prohibitive. Very but, um, very, yeah, yeah. And he, you know, he, he, um, it, it was a very interesting clip. And like I said, I like the fact that not only was he employing young people, but he was teaching them how to start and run a business and stay on the, on the black side of the board. Um, I thought that was really, uh, you know, a bonus to this whole situation. Um, I just want to circle back to the FinCom meeting for a real quick moment. I just went online. Um, our agenda is only posted to attend the FinCom meeting, and the FinCom has posted their agenda, and they have us on for 7 o'clock, just so you guys okay. know. Okay, thank you. Very good. Um, any Anything else interesting? I'm good. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna. All right. So you would need to next. let me know what you when your next meeting is going to be. So I'm looking, and yep. tentatively it would be um, February 24th. Sounds good to me. Okay. Yep, that's good for me. Six o'clock again. Yep. Um, I will keep you guys uh, uh, posted as far as between now and then if there are any um, the vaccines come up and we're actually going to start doing clinics. I'll let you guys know. Um, I did let Amy know that starting tomorrow. Yeah, um, that anyone who is going to go to these vaccination sites like Gillette and everything, the 75 and older and they're uh, they need someone to accompany them. That person also will now be able to schedule with that senior um, an appointment to get their vaccine. So I, when the announcement came out, I, 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 you know, copied it and I sent it off to Amy just so, you know, any I told her any little information, any little updates I would get, I would make sure I, I kept her aware of them. So um, that's the only other little thing. Excellent. Yeah, I saw that. I that was very interesting that that was um, presented. I. Uh, because I know my sister's taken my mother, my daughter's taken my mother-in-law, and um, you know they would like to get theirs. So I, I don't know if it's too late for them. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but they, th I thought that was a very interesting uh, situation. Um, and you know, if the vaccine's available, it's it's kind of a two for one. Mm -hmm. All right. Well. Uh, I, I appreciate everybody's work uh, on this situation and keeping the Board of Health running. Uh, it's been almost a year now that we've been uh, in this mode. And um, on, on a personal level, uh, I'm glad I'm going through it with the team that we have in place. And it's much appreciated. Um, knowing that I have you guys as teammates, um, gets me by on the on the on the tough days so thank you to 
everyone present and the rest of the members of our team. And uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Well, it's very nice, Alan. Get out right back at you. <laughs> and to Misty as well and Andy. And, yep, it's worked out very well. Uh, and I will uh, second the motion. Very good. Yes, I think we're very fortunate. I think we have a, a, a good team and I think we work well together and I think we complement each other um, with everything that we're trying to do for local public health and for the, you know, DEP, the year two governing agencies and everything. And it's we're getting there. We're getting there. With that, I'll say good night, guys. Good night. OK, good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>